What's up, people? If you're 350 or 4.3 liter, sounds like this. Then, this is to blame. Spider injector. This is the replacement that I bought. It's Eklund from Napa. And this is the updated version, the MPFI. Alright, so this is a 1999 GMC Sierra 1500. Two wheel drive, regular cab, step side. It's got 165,000 miles on it. The old Poppet style spider injectors have finally failed. What the problem is, is that those poppets are leaking or the fuel pressure regulator is leaking fuel into the upper part of the intake which is a dry intake and uh, every time you shut it off that fuel pressure regulator, regulator drips the fuel out and whenever you go to start it again when it's warm it has a very rich mixture and it takes a while to even out. I've seen people have problems with uh, misfires and uh, stuff like that that's usually a crack in one of the lines or but I'm, I'm leaning towards the fuel pressure regulator being the problem here but I went ahead and I bought the whole spiel I wanted to get a Delphi but 400 bucks this was 340 I believe uh, which is still overpriced but whatever it was in stock and I need the part now I also got a uh, upper plenum gasket kit Skull Pro you're going to need a crow's foot, you're going to need a set of universals, and you're going to need a, a decent ratchet. Uh, you're also going to need a, uh, a line wrench, 5 8 That crow's foot is 5 8 This is to um, disconnect the fuel lines back there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this just to break it free, and then this to finish the job. Um, this was a $20 wrench, and that crow's foot was like 13 Gaskets here were like... 36 or 38 and this comes with everything guys this isn't just a little plenum o-ring and if you have the smallest vacuum leak it's not going to run right I'm going to start by removing some of these connectors here um, first K&N has got to come off that's just hose clamps these cables got to get disconnected get out of the way I'm going to leave the throttle body attached to the upper intake plenum there's no need to remove it got to remember to remove the uh, crankcase breather Disconnect both throttle cables from the throttle body. Next, remove this 10 mil bolt that holds this bracket on. Next, you're going to want to remove the stud that holds this bracket on. Just through there and into there. And then there's another 10 mil tucked away down there holding this bracket. And all of this is just going to get set to the side. Alright, now we're going to start disconnecting connectors. We're going to do this one, this one, this is the main connector that goes into the top of the spider unit. Uh, it's just a little retaining clip, we pull that out, and then there's two tabs, one right there, and one in the back. And those need to be gently prodded with the screwdriver, and this whole thing is going to lift up. Now this plug controls all your injectors, all six of them, so you don't want to uh, break any of those tabs. This is the PCV, twist it counterclockwise and then pull up. Same with this one back here. This connector right here where my middle finger is has that white collar on it. You just push on it, it's spring loaded and now we'll disconnect. Of course do your uh, throttle position sensor, both of these, and then we'll do the fuel lines. There's where the crow's foot goes, right to the right of the distributor on the fuel line.
Okay, so when you're turning on those fuel lines, make sure you've actually got your ratchet set to tighten because they are backwards. They're right-hand thread, but they're backwards. So make sure you're turning them the right way. Now there's also a 10 mil nut holding the bracket on that needs to be loosened and removed. And that's what I'm doing now. I got a 3 8 universal with 10 mil deep socket on it. So once you have the fuel lines disconnected from down there, you're going to need to coax them out from the top of the spider. And to do that, I'm just using a quarter inch extension. And just ever so slightly using them out. A little bit of fuel came out, that's normal. There's the fuel line. So now what we're doing is removing these 10 millimeter bolts from the studs all the way around the plenum. Now we're getting ready to pull this whole thing off. There's a stud. Is any of that in focus? This whole thing will just come right off. It's like sand. There shouldn't be fuel in there. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I've actually reconnected the fuel line and the connector to the stock spider injector in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the cab and I'm going to turn the key and I'm going to see if it's leaking. And if it's not, if there aren't any noticeable leaks, when I turn the key off is that there's going to be fuel leaking out of the pressure regulator on the back. I'm 
Now I'm going to turn the key off. back is leaking. So it's leaking gas out of the back of the fuel pressure regulator like I expected, like the symptoms proved. So all I'm going to do now is pull this out and put the new one in. I'll show you guys the new one next. Alright so I'm going to start removing these pop -up valves and you're going to want to squeeze these. Be very careful because these are so brittle. I was surprised I wasn't getting this far. part that failed. Could have actually just replaced this part, but with these it's better to just replace the whole thing and go with the updated version. So here's the new one right here. So you can see it has the multi-port injectors now, the wires. Updated fuel pressure regulator. It's also different. So we're going to clean everything up real well and get this put in. So this Felpro gasket kit I bought actually came with the um, lower manifold gaskets as well. Um, of course all of these I'm going to replace this uh, pressure sensor and replace the ones on the end there. Also came with a tube of RTV. Um, nope. Felpro. Nice basket. But anyways, I got it cleaned up the best as I uh, could. I um, hit it with the carb cleaner and then uh, scrubbed it with the 3M pad right there. And then I uh, used a razor blade to scrape the surface and uh, of course a lot of rags. Um, I then vacuumed it. I vacuumed all the Freaking carb cleaner out of the uh, the ports here, and uh, all the little bits and pieces of rag that uh, dropped into there, I vacuumed out the shop vac. But other than that, I'd say it's ready to uh, accept the new fuel spider. Um, there is a procedure; it's uh, outlined in the instructions here. You got to make sure the fuel lines are routed correctly. Uh, here are the instructions. You can uh, read them for yourself. Yeah. Make sure it goes in there right. <laughs> Once again, here's the old one. That thing is decrepit. Compared to this new one. It's like some milking machine for a cow. Beautiful piece of engineering. So there's a new fuel spider, and it just goes right into the old bracket. No need to buy any new brackets. Don't let them sell you one. So now all you have to do is route these fuel lines to their respective cylinder. Each one is marked. There's the new fuel spider. Number three goes in first, followed by number one. And number five, when you do the other side, make sure that the electrical connectors are pointed towards the middle of the intake and make sure nothing's binding or bunched up. And what you're going to want to do is put some clean motor oil on that orange seal. You got to make sure everything slides together nicely and seals.
Oh, there it goes. Putting it back together is uh, it's reverse order. It's very easy to do. Um, it goes a lot quicker when you're putting it back together. But um, I just ran this thing up and down the road. Uh, also, make sure you disconnect the battery so you reset the computer. But uh, I just took it up and down the road, shifted through all the gears, and did fine. Uh, when I first cranked it over, I didn't get it on camera, but all that carb cleaner and shit had to burn off the side of there. And um, it threw a code, actually. When I first started it, it idled at about 2,500 RPM, and it took it forever to get back down to idle, which is the same, about 600. But, um, yeah, maybe 700, 650. But, uh... It took it a little while. It also threw a code of PL122, I believe. It's a throttle position sensor, low voltage or low current, something like that. I just used my uh, code scanner there. So what I did was I just erased the code. Um, I shut the engine off and restarted it, and it wasn't ever a problem again. Seems to run good now. If, uh, it's not producing the symptoms anymore. Starts right up each time. It's fixed. Well, I hope that video helps somebody.